All right, here's our little baby test light from the red and green wire to ground. Let's turn the key on or push the button to make the check engine light come on. There we go. That's not lighting up. Should it be lighting up? Let me uh, let me scope this wire. See what it's doing. This is interesting. Okay, so here's the scope. So the green channel is our ignition coil battery positive. Let's see what happens when we crank it. Okay, so what do we just determine on the wiring diagram? On the wiring diagram, we determine that this input to the engine computer is zero volts. That comes from this relay. That comes from this fuse, F010. Let's check this fuse, see what's going on there. All right, so in the fuse box, F010 is top one, this is under the hood, we were just there, so it goes from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and what do we expect to see on there, is that a hot at all times, it says terminal 30, that should be hot at all times, that 15 amp fuse, let's, uh, let's go check it out, alright, so F10 is right here, hot on this side, out on this side, what did it control that relay that lives right next door? This relay right here. Let's just make sure that power is making it to the load side. Okay, so let me do a quick check here. Let me connect these two with a jumper, a fused jumper, and this little test light should light up because this relay is the one in the picture that feeds this uh, red and green wire. Alright, I'm actually going to jump those two load pins through my 5 amp test light. See how handy test lights are? Load Pro? <laughs> no way. <laughs> um, so this light should light up if we bypass the relay with my 5 amp test light. It does. Okay, so that tells me, fuse is fine, the relay was not clicking. So this little relay, this thing right here, these are the control side pins. Let's see what controls the relay. And then figure out why, all right, obviously this thing's not clicking. All right, looking at this diagram again for the relay. So the, this fuse, the 15 amp fuse we just checked, F010, feeds both the control side and the load side. So we checked the load side, that's fine. What about the control side? It should feed one of the control pins, either this one, Yep, it sure does. So this one is ground side switched by, moment of truth, the junction box. Is that what went swimming? Let's see where this junction box lives. Let's see where connector X11002 is and take it from there. So looking up the location for connector X11002 at the junction box, sure enough, it's exactly where the water was, right there. So. Let's uh, get that plastic off and do a visual inspection. All right, here's our junction box. This is our connector. There's the green and red wire, and there are the green crusties, of course. So, yep. So this relay is burning hot. It has codes for the wipers. This is a mess down here. Just gonna unplug this connector just to do a visual inspection on it. Oh boy. Oh boy. We're done. <laughs> Oh, that's a shame. So the water did its damage. 
we can still get this thing running no problem but it's gonna need a new junction box programming connectors wires where it's toast so how do we uh, modify this mini so it runs and that it's reliable and works as intended so the power supply to this um, DME is uh, interesting so we have this terminal 15 relief relay which is controlled by the junction box and that is that red and green wire that does not have power right now so this relay is not clicking so we have no power to the ignition coils and to this engine computer line right here right um, what else is there another ignition power source to the engine computer well not really there is the DME relay which is controlled by the engine computer but I think that only powers up when the engine computer wants it to so right now the key is out everything's off and if we measure on this red and white wire that goes to let's see here DME relay red and white wire trace 2 goes to pin 5 terminal 87 right here on the diagram Let's put a test light on there. And the test light is just lit all the time. So the engine computer is powered up. That's not good. I don't know if it'll time out, but if we tie this red and white wire to the red and green, then the computer will see, hey, we have an ignition input, and then it'll probably never turn off the DME relay. So we need to get an ignition input to this red and green wire. I don't know if we can do it at the junction box. We can look at some diagrams at the junction box, see if we can grab it from there somewhere. But this is uh, kind of annoying. All right, so after the car ran, the, G, or the DME relay actually shut off, so that's good. Now, if we grab power from the DME relay output, should we send it directly to the ignition coils? or to the engine computer ignition power source. Hmm. Well, let's try to send it to the ignition power source. I'm gonna start it up again. We'll see on the scope if the ignition coils get power. Okay, so I open the door and our light's on. So our ignition coils do have power now. Let's see if it starts and runs. Keys on. It does start and run. Okay, let me shut it down. Make sure everything goes to sleep. We take the key out. So I want that to drop. I want the test light to turn off. All right, about a minute after shutdown, we have zero volts on there. Our test light is off. Just these two wires are connected right here. Let's just do it one more time. We open the door. Okay, so that powered up. The DME relay powered up for sure. Now, are the ignition coils gonna power up through the engine computer? Let's see. Put the key in. Crank no start, no power. Very interesting. So I think we have to send power directly to the ignition coils, not the DME power input pin, which uh, I think it should work. All right, so instead of going here, we're gonna go directly to the green wire. Now the ignition coil should have power. Yep, they sure do. Let's start it. Yep, starts and runs. Rev it up. And shut it down. Take the key out. And let's see if the DME goes to sleep and the coils lose power. All right, perfect. Power dropped out. We're good. So all we have to do is instead of that test light, 
was soldering a jumper and that's what the shop owner asked me to do he's like just get it to run and tell the owner that needs to be replaced it's gonna be expensive there is a recall out on these for the footwell module but not for the uh, junction box obviously needs programming once it's replaced the wiring needs to be redone it's a mess but at least we can get it to start and run more or less reliably for now all right so what we're gonna do here is expose the little copper on this red and white wire and on the green wire and just make a jumper between the two and the way I like to do that is just with using wire strippers just expose a little bit of copper right there you can even cut out a small section of insulation like that and just take these and pull that right off like that no problem. There we go. We have some copper right there. Do the same on the green wire. This one's a little tighter. Don't need a lot. You don't want to cut the wire, you just want to strip off a little bit of the insulation. Just like that. No big deal. This is a nice, pretty heavy gauge wire, so the solder will stick to it no problems at all. There we go. That's exposed. Let's uh, run a jumper, wrap it up, call this car fixed. All right, here we go. Our TS100 is nice and hot. I got the bypass wire wrapped here and here. So all we need to do is just uh, heat up that junction and let the solder do its thing. Just let it wick right into the strands. Perfect. Do the second junction. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So let's verify that the car starts and runs. We'll wrap this up. We'll call it done for now. No parts required. All right, so we have power to the ignition coils. Ignition key. Fire it up. Sweet. And we'll power it down. Make sure it's happy. Want to see those voltages go to zero when the DME relay shuts off. All right, sweet. Light bulb turned off. There's our bypass. I do want to put a little label on here somehow saying this is the ignition coil positive feed so people in the future will know what's going on here. But that's it. So mini's fixed, no parts required, but to fix it the right way, it's probably going to total this car. Um, appreciate everyone watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.